Previously on Chicken Police. She stood in the darkness. The light painted stripes on her body. She was the first womanly thing in my place for a long time. Believe me, Mr. Featherland, it's not an accident I came to you. Look, miss, I work for the police and I'm currently on leave. I couldn't accept private commissions even if I wanted to. My mistress's partner is Hobart Wessler. Or as most people know him... Ibn Wessler, the Kingpin. Exactly. Feathery gods, help me. Before I visit the club, I have to take a detour. I've got a feeling that this case isn't going to be a one-man job. And there's only one bird in the city I can trust. My ex-partner, Marty. He's going to be at the station. I can only hope he'll be willing to talk to me. I knew where to find Marty. At the station, we'd always draw straws about holiday duty. Marty never joined in. He always took the New Year's Eve shift, even though he had someone to go home to. I understood. Ten years ago, we survived the night the press called the Bloody New Year. Forgotten by Clawville, but not by us. We both left parts of ourselves behind that night. Phyllis and Roy's. Two hedgehogs with an arrogance typical of novice cops. They're as prickly as they look. Officious little shitheads, but harmless. Well, look at that. Hey, Sonny. What you scratching out over here? I heard the big boss threw you out. Tough luck, boys. I may not be on duty, but I'm still a cop. Just like you. Well... More than you. Hey, you don't have to be so peckish, old bud. By the way, you're on luck. Blood boils not in tonight. My lawyer's in charge. Oh, God. That clumsy buffalo is here tonight. If he doesn't end up in a cell again, he's lucky. <laughs> you got it. You looking for Marty, eh? I see you're still the brains around here, Phyllis. Yeah, I'm looking for Marty. Birds of a feather flock together. I see you're still the funny guy around here. You'll find the giant feather duster at the shooting range. As always. Hey, Royce. I'm telling you this because maybe you'll be able to understand. If this prickly shithead makes another racist remark, I'll strangle him with his own raincoat. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Hey. Whose side are you on, you jerk? Every time this poster disappears, good old Blood Boil puts it right back, immediately. I tore it down at least three times already. Actually, it's a kind of passive-aggressive game for us with the Chief. Here we are again, Claw Hill Police Department. I've never been good at history, but if I'm not mistaken, this place has been a church, a hospital, and even some insane cult's secret hideout over the years. Anyway, the place holds the secrets of the ages and some drunk pigs in the basement. Monica Rosen, receptionist in theory, but in reality, she's doing literally everything around here. Like the beating heart of the PD. She's too good for this place, even for this city. Hey, Monica. Hey, Boss Bird. What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be celebrating somewhere? Every day's a holiday since I got out of here. I can tell. But what are you doing here? Yeah, you could look after a few things for me, but first, I'd like to talk to Mr. Big Beak McChicken himself. Those two prickly assholes told me he's emptying the magazines in the hole. Like always. And if he carries on like that, he's gonna use up all our ammo. So it would be nice if you drag him out of there. 
You know how this day is for him. <laughs> for him? You know I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, I know. Okay, so just sign here and you're good to go. Thank you, darling. Don't mention it, boss bird. What do you know about the Czar Club? Nothing special. I've never been there. It's a famous place, though. Expensive cigars, unaffordable drinks, pretty gals. All the movie stars and politicians go there at least once a week. And all the big shot mobsters, too, I've heard. Yeah, I was saying the same thing. Still living in the Atlas? If something works, why change it, right? Well, if you like it there. Listen, Monica, you could, uh, come by sometime for a drink or, or two, you know? I didn't hear that, and you didn't say that. Okay, got it. Sorry. Anything else, Boss Bird? Do we have a file on Hobart, Ibn, Wessler? Are you kidding me? We have a whole room just for him. Want the key? You can spend the remaining days of your paid holiday in there. No thanks. Never mind. You're a bit sassy today, aren't you? I'm sorry, Sonny, but I'm starting to shed my feathers because of this insane asylum. You know, New Year's Eve and Blood Boil's not here when he should be. Somehow, I'm not sorry about that. Yeah, I bet you're not, Boss Bird. Natasha Katsenko. Hmm, interesting name. Is it real or just an alias? It's supposed to be real, but who knows? Good question. We have nothing on her. She's either clean or uses a fake name. Maybe both, but I don't think so. Aside from that, everyone knows what I know about her. Singer, star, the number one babe in this town, so to speak. Thanks, little bird. It's something. Glad I could help. Mort Mardigan, a notorious deadbeat. Poor guy's been blind since his teenage years. But that doesn't stop him from running into trouble. What the cluck did he do this time? Mort, you scabbiest beast. What the hell did you do? It's Morty to you, sonny boy. Everything's fine. There was just a bit of trouble in the bar, and someone got knocked on the head with a glass. It wasn't my fault. I'm as blind as a bat, am I right? <laughs> Did that ever bother you, Morty? Listen, sonny boy. Go tell them to leave me alone, eh? It's New Year's Eve, after all, and I didn't even do anything wrong. Not that wrong. Where's your little lapdog to get you out of this mess? Is that little pimp of a midget still sniffing around you? Uh, Jesse is a good boy, Sonny. And he's good to me, believe me. Oh, God, spare me the details. When will you finally realize that little shit's been using you? Oh, of course he's using me. <laughs> what could a pretty boy like him want from this old monster? Still, Sonny, I have no one else. Do you understand that? Don't you? Even you deserve better, pal. By the way, you look horrible, even for yourself. Are you feeling okay? Well, I'm not what I used to be. But neither are you, judging from your voice. But I'm seeing a doctor, sonny boy. I really am. Are you? Don't need to, Mort. I'm fine. Anyway, if Bubo prescribed you something, don't even think about taking it. to that insane owl. Damn right. Please, say something on my behalf, okay? I really don't have time for this detective buffalo shit. Hey, careful with that. Buffalo Malloy is the chief today. <laughs> like I care. 
I'll try to speak for you, but keep it down till then, okay? You don't need this shit, and I don't need it either. Sonny boy, you've always been a good friend. <laughs> More like a clucking pigeon. Detective Chow Hound Bosco. He thinks he's a real alpha, but nah, he's just a lap dog. Holy wild ones, look what the cat dragged in. Hello to you too, Bosco. I see you're busy as always. Eh, I've been sniffing around one of the rundown joints. You know how it goes. And boom, this son of a lizard comes flying out the window. I didn't know the lizards could fly. <laughs> so, Mort was being a bad, bad boy again. Nothing unusual. And you, still dying? I'm still a cop for another 121 days, Bosco. It's as unpleasant to me as it is to you. All right, all right. No need to bite. I wasn't trying to mess with you. You have Moses and Plato for that. And of course, blood boil. Let's hope I won't run into any of them tonight. Looking for Marty, eh? Ever since you left, he's kind of lost. He's trying to hide it, but he's not the same bird. Well, I don't think we'll have a teary reunion, thinking about how we parted. Let me give you some advice, Sonny. Let him rage. He'll be the same after that. Anyway, he was the one that shot you, right? You should be mad, not him. It's not that simple, Bosco. But we'll see how he reacts. Thanks anyway. No worries, pal. One of Blood Boil's favorites. Mainly because he's a dog, of course. Officer Jardine. They say she's clever, smart, and dangerous. We need more of her kind in here. All it takes is one look, and my comb starts to tingle, which never means anything good. All it takes is... Marty drinks this shit. I've never tried it, but I'm pretty sure it's gross and probably toxic. This is gonna be a hard ride. Last time we saw each other, he had a smoking gun in his hand and I was bleeding. I don't know how we can get past that, but it's worth a try. I was just about to go when you came in, so if you want shooting practice, maybe turn on the lights first. You're right. I'm gonna do that.
Marty looks good, big and loud and angry as always. Hey, Marty. Oh, well, look who's here. Hello, boss bird. Were you lost? This is the PD building, you know. Cut the shit, Marty. We're better than this. Well, at least you are. Better than anyone, huh? Marty, come on, let's forget that. What's past is past. Uh, easy for you to say, Sonny. Damn it, Marty, you shot me, remember? I almost bled to death. Hell yeah, I remember. Unfortunately, my aim wasn't good enough. I need your help, okay? That's what you want to hear. Well, it's a start. Okay, I've said it. I won't do it again. <sighs> yeah, right. So, are you in? Just for tonight. Small case, we'll wrap it up in no time. What kind of case? A personal one. How personal? Very. The kind of case where if you come with me right now, you're not on duty anymore. Oh, damn, Sonny. Stop it right there. I'm in. That's... that's it? Uh, do you know how boring life is here without your stupid reckless shit? Soon enough, I'll shoot all the ammo in here out of boredom. Right, so tell me, what's it about? I'll tell you in the car. Ooh, can I bring Bertha? Ah, oh, for the love of... Marty, this is a routine case. You can't bring your shotgun, okay? Bertha stays. Okay, okay. But at least Susie can come, right? <sighs> All right, Susie can come. That's what I want to hear. Hey, there were four weapons here. Where are the others? You're not bringing them with you, I hope. Well, we're going to a bar, aren't we? Yeah, that's the point. And? What? A buffalo killer and two handguns? We're only there to sniff around, not start a goddamn war. Ah, yeah, war, bar, what's the difference? And it's frickin' New Year's Eve, right? Of all that's furry, you know what? I don't even care. That's the spirit. Bye, Mandy. See you soon. <laughs> You've named the poster girl. You a bit lonely these days? You're one to talk. I've heard you muttering to her. What, me? To a poster? <laughs> Don't be silly. Still drink coffee? Yeah, my only poison. Except for guns, of course. And women. We could visit our old haunt. What do you think? Oh, a nice cup of Zip's coffee in the hop dog. I'm in. Oh, and maybe we'll get into a little fight too, huh? If it comes to that, I'm leaving you without a blink. Oh yeah, like last time? Those were uh, different times, Marty. With a different Sonny. Uh, well, all right. To the city then. You don't have to come with me, you know. Okay, okay, I know. Let's go. Sonny, there's a little problem. Not so little, and it smells, too. What the furry hell is Blood Boil doing here? Ah, well, it seems we can't avoid speaking to him. Oh, yes, we can. You have your rifle with you, right? W what <laughs> Just kidding. Sort of. The chief doesn't seem to be in a good mood. But he never is, actually. What a surprise. The two pigeons back together. And without my permission, of course. Chief Bloodboil. Damn. What was that, Santino? Nothing, sir. What a lovely evening. Am I right? I don't want to hear your crowing, Santino. What the hell are you doing here? Hey, hey, hey. Careful with the racist barking, old hound. Oh, oh, it's getting hot in here. Can we just skip this part? It's New Year's after all. And you're on duty, if I'm not mistaken, Martin. Where do you think you're going? 
That's it, boss. To serve and protect. Sonny was in the neighborhood and stopped by to say hi. He's a cop too, right? Only on paper, and you know that very well, detective. I don't want any trouble, boss. I just wanted to say hi to Monica, and then this feather pillow showed up. I invited him to grab a quick coffee. You can allow him that much, can't you? Your coffee breaks usually end up in shooting or brawling, chickens. Oh, just a coffee, boss, I swear. Oh, have a heart. It's New Year's Eve, and I haven't seen my old partner for so long. How touching. You shot him with a shotgun, if I remember. <laughs> Family quarrel. For all the marrow bones of the world, get the hell out of my sight. Have a lovely evening, boss. You especially. Fuck off right now, Santino. I see you're swamped, buddy. I've sent the old lizard away. I don't need him to foul the air anymore. I hate his kind anyway. Well, because he's a reptile? No, because he's a good-for-nothing piece of shit. Oh, yeah, that's true. And you? Are you letting off some steam? Something like that. We'll go and check out some CD joint. We're cops after all, ain't we? And this is still Clawville. That's true, pal. Protect and serve. Yeesh, get a room, you two. Ah, shut up, Marty. Eh, maybe next time. I'm not in the mood to meet any of my ex-colleagues right now. We're leaving, sweetheart. Stay safe, boys. I'm glad to see you two together again. I'm afraid you're alone with that. Hey, don't make me change my mind. You won't, Marty. I bet you can't wait to get mixed up in some serious trouble again. Yep, that's true. I'm serious, boys. Be careful out there. We're big birds, Monica. We can take care of ourselves. Mostly. Okay, but take care of each other, too. Will do, Monica. Yes, ma'am. Look at these two simpletons. <laughs> they don't even realize their jackets are full of holes. For the wild God's sake, don't dare tell them. I already tried, but nothing happened. Figures. Hello, gents. Everything all right? Uh, everything's just fine, Sonny. Well, look, the chick police are together again. What a time to be alive. Am I right, Royce? <laughs> You're late, Foss. Hey, that reminds me. Look at what I found under my coat. It's Her Majesty Big Bertha in the flesh. Whoa, 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 don't shoot. We were just joking, okay? We don't want any trouble. <laughs> yeah, I was just joking, too. <laughs> I'll never get bored with these two. They're so cute. I wonder why they thought you would shoot at another cop. Hey, it's just happened once, okay? Am I right, boys? You, you, you're right, Marty. Yeah. Um, we all know it was an accident. See? How many days did we have our first squad car? About three, I think, before we crashed into that tank of acid. We? <laughs> you crashed it. Don't blame it on me, Marty. I was unconscious, if I remember correctly. That's your problem, boss. You should be more careful with low-hanging concrete blocks next time. Yeah, I've been paying attention to that ever since. Yeesh, my condolences, pal. I see your cleaning lady died. Yeah, she set foot in the bedroom once. I haven't seen her since. I didn't dare to go after her. Oh, I wouldn't want to go in there either. But what's that smell? Ah, cigarettes and whiskey. Yeah, with a hint of dirty laundry, but no, this is lavender? Ah, that. Now, that's got to be the Ibanez dame. You know, the broad who gave me the letter. And the job, obviously. Ah, uh, pretty, huh? I can smell it. She's an exotic, too. An Impala, maybe? 
furry hell. That's why Chief Inspector Bloodboil hates you so much. He's jealous because your nose is better than a clucking bloodhound. <laughs> the bitter old dog. He just hates all foul. Ah, yeah, true. Except for Monica. Monica is a fairy, not a bird. So, <clears throat> what now? Well, let's gather my stuff and head to the club. We gotta find out who this Natasha is and what she wants from us. I mean, what she really wants. Mm, after you, boss bird. I wouldn't like to touch anything in here anyway. If it's okay, I'll just stand around and stare out the window? <laughs> sure, just do it quietly. I'm gonna clean up here one day. Yeah, and one day the sun's gonna explode, too. Have you started on your great novel yet? I've already started working on my will, but I realized I'd have to leave everything to you, so cluck that. Huh, pity. I've always wanted a chicken coop smelling like old socks and bourbon. You'll have to earn it first, Marty. Books I'm never going to read. Maybe nobody ever has. So this is them? Yeah, the wild gentlemen. They were role models when I was a kid. Well, you must have been a weird kid. Which ain't surprising. My idols were the White Wolf and Super Squirrel. The White Wolf, eh? <laughs> Explains a lot. You know, when I was back in Averia, Clawville and the whole let's live together in peace bullshit seemed like an unattainable dream. Those guys made it happen. The city rose from the ashes of the Great Fire. Yeah, but look at it now. And what would have become of you if you hadn't ended up in Clawville? Maybe you'd even be happy? Perhaps. The old days. You know, I miss him sometimes. What, the hype? Us as celebrity cops? <laughs> nah, the work, the buzz, the phone ringing at 4 a.m. and knowing if you pick it up, you'll be dragged into something terrible, because that's your job. And of course, you pick it up every clucking time. I'm not sure it's healthy to enjoy that. Hey, no healthy animal becomes a cop in Clawville. Yeah, true. Ah, man, I can't imagine how you feel. The only good thing you ever had, huh? Shut up, Marty. <laughs> sure. Hmm, I didn't know you used to be a kindergarten teacher. But leather? It's history, so back off. I'm touched by the trust you have in me, boss bird. There are things better left undisturbed, okay? Yeah, got it. Who's that shaggy creature? That's M.B. Davis, you bird brain. Politician? Am I gonna have to smash your beak? Seriously, I don't know who the hell he is. <sighs> I wanted to travel the world when I was a kid, but I think I'm gonna end up dead in here whether I like it or not. Mm, it would be best to board it up. It'd go well with this rundown neighborhood. It may be run down, but somehow I still feel like it's honest. Sure, you can live in Cockroach Town. That's an honest place too. Has a similar stink. Believe me, Marty, I thought about it. Uh, why am I not surprised? Maybe in another lifetime, old bird. My wife took all the good ones. 
You know, this city's outgrown us. Why do you say that? Well, don't you feel it? The whole place squeezing you. The polluted air, the sirens, and the smell of cordite. Ah, don't be such a drama queen. It's not the world that's changed, it's us. Clawville's Clawville. We're just getting older. No, there really is something. You know the feeling of foreboding, of something wrong, of something bad on the horizon. Ah, uh, you're screwing my mood. Yeah, but I'm not sorry. No shit. I don't even know where the key is. Whatever's inside is gonna stay there forever. You're getting older, Marty. You look like shit. Ah, gee, thanks. I thought angels don't grow old. Ah, <sighs> leave it, will ya? Sure. Boo-hoo. Huh? <laughs> when was the last time I was here? I don't know. Years ago. When Molly left. Whew, that was a... a wild night. Yeah. You know, Sonny, you can call me. Not just when you want to investigate some shady case from a shady dame and you need a big meat shield to cover your ass. Times have changed, Marty. And I don't call anyone. All right, all right, Bosberg. Whatever you say. Midnight had passed, and the intoxicated madness kicked in. We could only crawl along Shalva District's main street toward downtown. The city's heart beat differently. Ancient buildings were defaced by neon signs and billboards, like half-drunk lovers on a fine leather sofa. Great old houses neighbored by garish modern blocks. A place that makes the head hurt. The Tsar's huge neon sign was visible for miles. A blazing red sign advertised tonight's main attraction, the amazing Natasha. Uh, cops were never welcomed at places like this. They hoped we were too late for the show. We had to be inconspicuous, but it was never easy with this bird mountain by my side. Ah, so this is the famous Czar Club. More like infamous, Marty. It's not for our kind, that's for sure. And I don't mean that they don't like foul here. Well, at least we don't have to be afraid that they see you as a detective, Boss Bird. Very funny, Marty. So what are we gonna do now? We find Natasha, the broad who sent me the message, remember? But first, we need to get into the club. And Marty, please, don't monkey this up. Excuse me? On behalf of the well-respected and noble primate community of Clawville? Cut the crap, Marty. Let's focus on what we're here for, okay? As you say, Boss Bird. Do you remember when the Clawville Chronicle was a really high-quality newspaper? You mean when they wrote something about us daily? Yeah. What exactly happened to them? Well, they got bored with us, Marty. And to be honest, so did I. But still, here we are working together again. Funny, huh? Yeah, hilarious. Huh, I like this. Why is that? I don't know. Because it's moving, I guess. You're a simple bird, aren't you? Yes, I am. Look at that. Isn't that the new... It is, Marty. A brand new 942 Silver Hawk. Haven't seen such beauty since I left Averia. Of all that's furry, whose is it? Maybe it's Ibn Wessler's. 
I guess he's no paper tiger. Yeah, he sounds like a fellow who drives around in one of these. Lucky bastard. One day, neon signs will cover the whole world, I'm telling you. You read that in some kind of science fiction book? No, it's just what I think. Oh, so you have your own thoughts now. The world's really moving forward. Pluck off, Sonny. Ah, you know, seeing this, I can't wait for the show. The girls? New Year's Eve's once a year, right? And we're not on duty. Have I asked how Laura's doing? Whoa, hey, I, <laughs> I was just kidding, okay? My relationship with Laura is unwavering, like the rhino beauty on this picture. Interesting taste you've got. Feathers? Scales or dermal armor, a lady's a lady, my friend. Thank the wild gods for self-sacrificing gentlemen like you. Honestly, I think these types of women only see faceless tuxedos, cufflinks, and wallets. And in the mirror, they're just brooches, necklaces, and earrings. Don't be so radical, Marty. They're women. They live by different rules. Hmm, that was kind of deep. It's not. Just bullshit. There's more where that came from. Ooh, teach me, master. When you're old and wise like me, you'll realize none of it is worth a damn thing. Wait, that was deep again, right? Maybe it was, Marty. Maybe it was. Amazing. Hey, that's your old friend, right? Wait, what was his name? Uh, Lawrence? Lamar? No, Liam. Lewis. Yes, it's him. To be honest, Sonny, I always thought that guy's not all there in the head. Nobody's perfectly sane in Clawville, Marty. But if not for this old rabbit, I wouldn't be here today. I'll never forget that. Should I thank him for that? Or kill him for it? You're reading my mind, boss. Sonny, my dear friend. Hi, Lewis. This is my partner. But I'm sure you already know. You have no idea how happy I am to meet you, Mr. Marty. I'm a big admirer of your work. Pleasure's all mine, Lawrence. Lawrence? <clears throat> Anyways. So, the legendary chicken police back together? <laughs> Isn't it amazing news? Don't ruffle my feathers, Lewis. Those days are long gone. We're just here for the entertainment. Or something like that. I see. Well, that's a shame. See you inside? I have s s something to do, my f f f f f pal, but I'll try to make it for the main event. Okay, then. Catch you later, pal. That fella's built like a brick shithouse. I don't think we'll be able to just sneak past him. Wanna bet? Not today, Marty. Remember, we must avoid suspicion. Ah, okay, okay. No trouble. I get it. It's okay, Bertha. Maybe next time. What was that? Uh, nothing. Just the wind. Did you bring Big Bertha with you? Gods, no. What are you thinking? What idiot would bring a shotgun to a club? Was that a rhetorical question? Jeez, look at that guy. That's not a guy. That's a demon. Straight from the dog-eared pages of a cheap detective novel. Yeah, I bet his name's Bill. Nah, he's definitely a Bob. Five bucks for Bill? Okay, I'm in. Howdy, pal. Gentlemen. How can I help you on this wonderful, chilly night? We're expected in the VIP lounge. My apologies, but I don't remember ever seeing you gentlemen here before. May I ask? Now stop right there, big guy. I get it. Yeah, I know exactly how this works. So what do you have to do to get in? Nothing's easier, sir. Are you on the list? The list? Yeah, I've... Uh, uh... Uh, don't tell me you forgot. 
I'm afraid I did, Marty. Sorry, big guy, but I'm pretty sure we're not on the list tonight. That's a shame. I really sorry, sirs. In that case, you can't come in. Yeah, right. Uh, thanks. My pleasure, gentlemen. Look, I really don't want any trouble, but... It is even more inconvenient for me, sir, but... This place doesn't like, uh, coppers. Forgive this line. I can't let just anybody in, and there are some I am strictly forbidden to. Please, you have to understand. Listen here, you cow. Do you have any idea who we are? You ever read the papers? Of course I know who you are, sir. I get the news and more. And I must admit, it's an honor to meet you in person, Mr. Santino Featherland and Mr. Marty Machikin. The Bell of the Pantheres is one of my favorite books. Oh my god, not the books again. So it would be terribly inconvenient for me if I had to use force on you, gentlemen. What? what did you just say? Relax, Marty. This guy has chicks like you for breakfast. Uh, thanks for the information, pal. Uh, have a nice night. Thank you for understanding, gentlemen. And forgive me for my austere composition. No problem, Shakespeare. Say, big guy, you know Mr. Lewis Hayworth? But of course. Mr. Hayworth is an impeccable gentleman. And also a frequent visitor of the club. Is that so? Good to know. And? I'm afraid that is all, monsieur. What can you tell me about the first lady of the place, big guy? Uh, you mean Miss Natasha Katsenko, sir? You're right on point, pal. Nothing you don't know already, sir. Just try me. Well, she owns the place. And, uh, that's it? Well, that's, uh, <clears throat> unbelievable. Pardon, monsieur, but I'm not permitted to say anything more. Look, Lewis, that bouncer over there. Well, yes, he is a bit intimidating, but his manners are impeccable. Am I right? Yes, indeed, but it seems tonight we're not on his list. Oh, I see. Uh, um. Oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> You'd like to go in, but he won't let you. Yeah, something like that. No, 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 no problem at all. Come with me. I'll t t t talk to him. Much obliged, pal. Yeah, thanks, Bunny. Excuse me. Ah, oh, jeez, what the hell's wrong with you, Marty? What? Did I say something wrong? Let's just knock that giant out, shall we? Easy peasy. Let's just not do that, shall we? Okay. Sir! How'd you do? Everything's fine, Mr. Aworth. Good. <clears throat> uh, look, this noble pair of pigeons are my friends. They're on the list, okay? Merci la mon, sir. And as for you, <clears throat> you owe me one, gentlemen. Thanks, old pal. It was my p p pleasure to help you, as always. The jazz overwhelmed us. There was no band in sight, yet the music seeped from the walls like years of cigarette smoke and the smell of spilt whiskey. Behind the bar, rows of fancy bottles reflected the harmonious voices of pretty dames and the clinking of crystal glass. It was the kind of place that makes you drunk, even if you've never had a sip. A dangerous place for someone like me. No matter how alien I felt, it was strangely like coming home. Welcome to the Tsar. Well, here we are. Mother of... I take you to the nicest places, eh, sweetheart? Oh, does it mean you're buying, honey? Don't even think about it. Oh, men these days. So, we're here to find a dame called Natasha. I have a hunch she won't be hard to find. 
Let's mingle and try to avoid suspicion. Just like always. No, Marty, not like always. This time it's for real. I was hoping to have missed the main event. You're a rusty old cock, that's why. <laughs> so says the little butt jam. But what? That's not even a word. It is now, all because of you. You should feel honored, butt jam. Uh, you know, Sonny, sometimes you're like an evil little child. This guy is certainly not a gangster henchman. Of course he's not. Oh, I know this fodder guy. He was kind of good in Death of the Horse. <laughs> You've seen every cluckin' movie. You know, Laura and I go to the movies a lot. When was the last time you went? Exactly 12 years ago. Oh, you remember that precisely? Let me guess. Molly? Yep, our very first date. I see. What did you watch? I don't remember. I just remember her and nothing else. You're a clucking poet. I mean it. Hicks Poodle plays a private eye, hired to look for a woman, then gets into some kind of blackmail thing that's connected to the first case, and... Hey, uh, Marty? What, yeah? I don't give a shit. You think this is one of those movies where the femme fatale gets everything in the end and the poor detective's left stranded? Yep. Just like life. Huh. Another lupus movie. Jeez. Is there nothing today they're not trying to sell with this guy? Whoa, don't be rude, Sonny. Lupus is a timeless genius. Have you seen Predator City? God, I'm still getting chicken bumps. But wait, who's that next to him? Cassandra Ruby Fay. Nah, never heard of her. Cassandra Ruby Fay. Oh, gods, even her name makes me kill weak in the knees. Watch your blood pressure, pal. Don't mind me, just women and guns are my only weakness. Huh, <laughs> no shit. Fox is a wolf who sends flowers. What? Oh, nothing. I read it somewhere. Fascinating. I didn't know you could read. Ha ha ha. Very funny. Remember that old case with the fox and the raven? How could I even forget? God, absurd, right? All that bloodshed for a piece of cheese. Yeah, hunger can bring out the monster in animals, right? and the wildest and most primordial instincts, no matter how civilized they seem. As you say, Marty. Remember that other case with the turtle and the rabbit fella? Oh gosh, Marty, where do you dig these out? Uh, my mind is a bottomless pit, my friend. Was the rabbit a runner and the turtle was what, his buddy or? His dealer, actually. Ah, yeah, you're right. We found the rabbit near the river with a missing leg. Brutal stuff. Two missing legs, actually, but yeah. What happened with the turtle in the end? It's a little bit blurry. Your bottomless pit of a mind is a dark and sad little place. The turtle thought he would run faster if he ate the legs of the rabbit. You know what? This city's seriously fucked up. It is, Marty. Remember that other case? With the oh, God. Uh, is uh, what you're you know, it is. 
So, where the hell is Natasha? Well, let's ask that stud over there with those nice gals. Mm, that guy looks way too horny for my taste. Oh, man, your sense of humor is bad as ever. You just need to get used to it again. What if... Uh... Ah, this is the life, huh? What's this guy do? Real estate? Mob accountant? Or is he a movie star? He looks like a coat hanger to me. Uh, that was actually worse than the previous joke. Heh, <laughs> I try. Ah, this is the l- Hey, look- uh, <laughs> She has pretty long legs. I mean, pretty and long legs for a squirrel, but I don't want to be prejudiced. We're not here to stare at pretty squirrels. We're here to investigate, remember? Hey, there's Philmar. Who? Oh, yes. Philmar. Because that's what he calls himself, right? You know him well? We had some seriously wild cases together, yes. Mainly in Averia, way before Clawville. Another place and another life. Sounds good. Like the blurb of some cheap pulp fiction book. Yeah, it was the exact opposite. But the old bird's worth saying hi to. Well, well, if it isn't the great detective, Marlowe. Blow me, Sonny. You know I don't use that name anymore. Okay. Mr. Dumbass alias Phil Marlowe. So says someone who tried to go undercover with a feather pillow mafia is a turkey. Right, Mr. Turk Cayman? Hey, that was a long time ago. I was young. And I stick to my principles and my stupidity. Phil Marlowe and that's that. Don't rile me up, you old fart. Okay, okay, fair enough. Sorry, I'm a little clapped tonight. Uh, I know the feeling, pal. By the way, what are you two doing here? You stick out a bit. Are you here for a good old-fashioned beating? We stick out? Man, you look terrible. Like someone who sat on an electric pole. Don't even ask. I feel exactly like that. You want a case? Five feet tall, half of that legs. Angelic voice, demonic eyes. Just the usual. Oh, boy. And you? Something like that. Just don't know the exact numbers yet. A dame named Natasha. She called us here. If I'm not mistaken, the joint is hers. Yeah, she owns the joint, amongst others. Well, good luck, guys. That broad has a reputation. She's not the kind to toy with, if you know what I mean. Any useful information? For free? Stop clucking around, Philmar. All right, but just because of the old days. Look for me after you've talked to her. You wouldn't understand what I have to say about her before then. Don't leave unless you're thrown out, in which case, you know the drill. We don't know each other, I'll deny you in a blink. Good to see you too, old pal. We'll be back. Two whiskeys, kid, and no horsing around. I've never heard that one before. Uh, Sonny, you gotta drive, you know? Yeah, you're right, Marty. Hey, Longface, give me a glass of tap water, too, okay? Yes, sir. Coming right up. That wasn't exactly what I meant. As I recall, you're always bragging about hiding your shotgun in your coat so well. No, sure. Maybe I have it with me now. <sighs> What? Well, do you see that bottle, Marty? That's a 28-year-old Golden Eagle whiskey. Of all the furry gods, you're right. And they've just left it on the bar. Someone ordered it, got so drunk he forgot all about it. So? So we're confiscating it as evidence. <laughs> yeah, well, more like stealing it. But if it's easier for you... Ah, you're twisted, pal. But to be honest... I've no objections. Hmm. Look, uh, Sonny, I know it's not my place, but Laura's father went to that guy when his, you know, problems uh, had gone too far. 
You're treading on thin ice, Marty. No, I just... <laughs> Look, fellas at the station are talking, you know? All kinds of things. Moses, Plato, Bosco, and the others. Talking, eh? About what? About why Blood Boil took my badge? About what an untrustworthy alcoholic wreck I am? Look, I, I'm sorry, it doesn't matter. Good, and let it stay that way. At least we're cracking this one together, yeah? Sure, Marty. Molly, my ex-wife, what do you have to do with all this? Come to daddy, darling. Oh, man, I totally get you. I haven't dusted you off in a while, partner. Looks like I may be needing you now. Ironic, but ever since I've been on furlough, with only my fake badge sitting in my cabinet, I feel more like a cop than I ever had before. More like a Clawville cop, anyway. Calling Boo's darling, it's kind of weird, don't you think? Says someone who calls his gun collection his harem. Touche. I'll shut it. Good birdie. Ibn, I think I know her from somewhere. Maybe in your dreams, pal. Isn't that? Yes, it is. The great Ibn Wessler, in the flesh. So much for our incognito. You think he noticed us? Only if he's not entirely blind. Ah, great. Just act nonchalant, my friend. No, it can't be. What now? Is that Olivia? No, Marty. Hey, uh, Olivia. Are you talking to me? It's me, Marty McChicken. Oh, God. What a pleasant surprise. The roaster coppers in person. Chicken police. But yeah, Mr. Wessler, you could say so. The name's... Sunny Featherland, of course, of course. Chicken police. Your partner is, uh, he is, uh... Marty McChicken, sir. I, I just introduced myself to your lady companion seconds ago. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy to see you. Hello, boys. So, to what do we owe this pleasure, gentlemen? Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> we, we were, um, just in the neighborhood, and... Cut the crap, Marty. All right, we're here for your sweetheart, Natasha. Oh, I see. No big deal. Just a blackmail thing. You know, horrifying threats written on the wall with blood-red paint. The usual stuff. You must be familiar with this kind of thing. Oh, yeah, indeed. It's a uh, nasty business. But I didn't know Natasha hired a detective because of this simple matter, but... To be honest, I understand. I would have taken matters into my own hands, you see. But I'm kind of busy. Mr. Wessler had a meeting with Attorney General Hamtaro yesterday, so he's rather tired. If you would excuse us. Oh, dear Olivia, it's okay. These gentlemen are just doing their job, right? And if I've heard correctly, they're notoriously thorough. So, how can I help you? We've got a few questions, if you don't mind. I'm at your service. Nice bunker you got here. Well, thank you, but it's not mine. Not anymore. But I'm sure you already know that. <sighs> Listen, detective. If you want to know something, please ask straight, huh? All right, Mr. Wessler, let's make this a bit more professional. I'm not as exciting as people tend to believe. I grew up in a poor family of many siblings. I'm the only one still alive, unfortunately. 
My career started with a shoe store, and now, here I am. I wouldn't call that an average life. Shoe store owner to mob boss. How dare you speak to Mr. Wessler like that? Leave it, Olivia, dear. It's just provocation. I'm sorry if I offended you, Mr. Wessler. Shall we talk about something else? Everybody knows Mr. Hayworth. He's an antique piece of furniture in this city, so to speak. Only a bit worn out. It's not my fault that he's so much in debt, Detective, but the name of his family still rings quite loud in Clawville. Is that still worth anything? The name is just their name, of course, but the man behind the name is another matter, Mr. Finneland. You're a pragmatic rat. Thank you. Look, Detective, if you want to know something, just ask. All right, Mr. Wessler. Has your assistant been working for you long? Are you talking about me? Yes, I'm talking about you, ma'am. Let me answer your question, then. I've been in Mr. Wessler's employment for six months. Why do you ask? Oh, just uh, routine questioning, you know. Most of them aren't good for anything. Just killing time. It sounded rude to me. Yeah, please forgive a detective. Olivia's a real firecracker. Hmm. Wessler is a tricky guy. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about him, so I have to be cunning. I can't just pin him against a wall. Yet. How did you feel when you heard about the blackmail? Honestly, I found it ridiculous. And now? Now I'm kind of interested. But I wouldn't call it blackmail yet. They're just empty threats. There were no demands. Good point. Thank you. Are we done? No, not quite. I'm sorry to hear that. You seem a very busy man. May I ask what you do? Eh, it's, uh, uninteresting. Would you elaborate? Eh, I got a small share in the meat substitute business. If the new product works, eh, maybe we can make your job easier. You mean reduce predation in Clawville? There are such plans, uh... If you're interested, talk to Olivia, my assistant. She's an expert in what she does, uh, <laughs> unlike me. Thank you. That's it for now. You're very taciturn, Mr. Wessler. Though I've heard you're quite the speaker. Look, I'll gladly talk to anyone about business, and even happy to talk about art. But uh, I'm no fan of interrogation on a night out. Are you even on duty? Sorry for any offense, Mr. Wessler. Let's talk about something else. Wessler is tougher than I thought, and he's secretive. It's time to gently beat around the bush. Do you spend a lot of your time here? It's a strange question, you know. Humor me. Of course I spend a lot of time here. I'm here every time Natasha performs. Sadly, yeah, it's getting rarer. Is it compatible with your other businesses? Huh? What? Writing threatening messages and hiding them? I didn't say that. You're sly for a foul Featherland. But this ain't your territory, is it? I guess not, Mr. Wessler. Business going well, Mr. Wessler? Eh, depends on which one. Real estate, catering, charity, protection, extortion, bribing cops, contraband, the usual. Funny guy. How are the casinos? Fine, thank you. Yeah, gambling has always been a good business. Luck is expensive around here. <laughs> Damn, if only I knew that. I heard gambling was illegal. And I've heard you're not on the force at the moment. Then it seems we have a fair fight. 
on uneven ground, Mr. Featherland. I'm not sure I'd stand on it for long, if I were you. That was candid. Yeah, I try to be clear. Is everything all right between you and Natasha? Yeah, you don't beat around the bush, do you? <laughs> Understandable, I guess. Naturally, our relationship is stable and perfect. I'm the setting, she's the gemstone. Yeah, if you know what I mean. I rarely hear such poetry, but uh, I understand exactly what you mean, Mr. Wessler. So, you have your answer. No recent friction? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? It would make my job easier. Yeah, it would only lead you astray. So be glad that I tell you no. No friction. Ibn is quick-tempered, and I can use that to my advantage. I've confounded and softened him with my previous questions. Now it's time to be specific and ruthless. The mob boss and the pussycat, eh? How did you even meet? Huh? Are you trying to piss me off, Corpora, so I accidentally let some big secret slip out, huh? A simple answer would work. Yeah, <sighs> you know, Natasha, she's both connoisseur and muse, uh, uh, So, uh, how was it, uh, uh, when was it exactly? You don't remember? That's strange. Ah, yeah, the millions, of course. It was like another lifetime. It happened right here. Only this place was called the Millions back then. Hm. She was a dancer. Behind the scenes, I arranged opportunities for her on the big stage. Yeah, maybe she still doesn't know it was me. Then one day, I invited her for a drink with a promise that if she was willing to meet me, I'd buy the place for her. Now I guess she was willing. The next day, she had the club in her name. Well, that is romantic. Eh, there are many kinds of romance, Birdman. There's cheap, and there's expensive. You get what you can afford. Do you live in the same house as Natasha? Oh, you're really something. Natasha's a free woman, but mostly, yeah, at my place in Gold Town. But she has her own kind of a weekend house. Hmm, how often does she use the weekend house? Yeah, every other weekend. Roughly. I see. That's very important information. Yeah, if you say so. So Natasha feels like she's in grave danger, yet she's still going out alone. Yeah, I know what you're getting at. But I'm 100% sure of her loyalty. She's gone out very rarely since this started, and mostly in my company. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure if you do, but uh, in our social circles, banquets and dinners are frequent. Hmm, illegal gambling nights. <laughs> you got me there. Yeah, you're right. Natasha is crazy by the roulette wheel. Always putting it all on the red, right? Yeah, you're a real rotten bastard, Sonny. Although, yeah, always on the red. Yeah, right. So, can we meet your lady? Mm, I don't see why not. But first, please, listen to her sing. She's on soon. Thank you for your time. We'll be seeing you. I have no doubt about that, unfortunately. Hey, uh... We should, uh, grab a coffee or something, Olivia. You know, for old time's sake. Pleasure to meet you, gentlemen. Goodbye. Oh. Please, take a seat. The show's gonna start soon.
That was, um, unique. Oh, that is cute. Nobody has ever given me such a unique compliment before. Forgive me, my name is Santino Featherland. <laughs> I thought so. You look more or less like I imagined. More or less? Sometimes less is more, Mr. Featherland. Ahem. You were amazing, dear. As always. Could you be my little furball and fetch me a cocktail? But of course. Ibn will be back soon. We'll have a few minutes to talk. Then he'll end the conversation and throw you both out. <laughs> With all due respect, ma'am, we're not that easy to get rid of. Doesn't matter who's trying, believe me. <sighs> Doesn't matter, he'll do it. That's why I'm telling you. I don't want a scene. <laughs> My room's upstairs. Meet me there in 20 minutes. Come alone, Sonny. You'd be too conspicuous otherwise. Hey, I understand. You know, they call him Target Marty at the station. I don't have time, Mr. Featherland. Oh, sure thing, Natasha. I'll come to your room. Three knocks, a short pause, then another three. I'll be waiting. Go, before he comes back. I knew she was trouble the first time I saw her. She wore danger like a perfume. It was simply part of her being, and it attracted me like light attracts the moth people. I wanted to be the microphone as she whispers her melodies, or the pillow she rests her feet on while reading some cheap romance. I wanted to be her nightdress, barely touching barely covering her marble skin. But I was a cop, and a lifetime wouldn't be enough to rid myself of what a woman like her hides under her makeup. Keep your distance, Sonny. Just keep your distance. Next time on Chicken Police, I get offended if women don't drink in my company. Oh, you are a funny guy. Lucky hell. Welcome to the sweltering Nile, gentlemen. Marty, that's enough. Then two cocks suddenly learn to fly and even swim by God. One more word and I'll bite off your arm. Please tell me there's going to be a glorious shootout. Keep it straight, Sonny. Shut up and shoot, you big feather pillow. Of all that's furry and plumy, that's fantastic. Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's stop it right there.